All right, so now we want to know how do we go from velocity to acceleration and get this, you know, get these two components in our normal tangential components here. So we want to answer this question. How do we go from velocity to acceleration in NT components? And we're going to focus on velocity. And this definition of velocity here in normal tangential components is simply this magnitude of the speed u t hat like this. And to get to acceleration, you know, we know that we take a time derivative of velocity to get acceleration. So we say the acceleration is dv dt. And if I substitute this definition here, it would be a time derivative of this product v u t hat. And according to the product rule here, because each of these, the magnitude or the speed v and this unit vector u t hat are functions of time. In particular, u t hat, this unit vector is changing direction with respect to time right here. And so what we have is by the product Product rule, we would have dv dt u t hat plus v d u t hat over d t like this. And so we can already see right away, hey, I see this first tangential component of the acceleration up here. Here, this and this are the same. This is a t. Boom. All right. So really, the question comes down to how does this business right here become this. And so that question really is the focus of this question even is really about what is this time derivative of a unit vector ut hat. This is kind of the focused question that we have to answer to really, uh, you know, to really make this happen, right? To understand what's happening here and why we get this v squared over rho, this un hat direction, okay? And so what is dut dt? In order to answer this question, let's look at the definition of the derivative. And in particular, this dut hat dt, in terms of the definition of derivative, would be the limit as delta t goes to zero of delta ut hat over delta t like this. Yes. So now we have even a more focused question. What is, what is, what is delta ut hat? And to answer that, let's go up, let's consider a particle that we need a drawing here. So here I've got the same curve path as I had before. Let's say that the particle starts here at time t and then moves here t prime and it's on the same arc length. And we'll call this arc length delta s like this, all right? So it moves from t to t prime in this arc length right here. If, if it's on the same arc length, it has the same center of curvature. If I have some unit vectors to describe the coordinate system, I would have u t hat here going like this, boom, and u n hat right here, boom, like that. And at time t prime, let's see here, it would be tangent to the path, boom, u t prime and u n hat prime like this. Hopefully I drew this to a point where their center, where their radius of curvatures will intersect. Yes, there is that center of curvature, boom. Here's this radius of curvature. All right, all right, all right. And, and you know, from t to t prime, the particle moves through an angle. We'll call that delta theta, like this. Okay, so we see the directions of the unit vectors as we go from t to t prime on this arc length delta s, which is really part of the same circle. And hopefully all of that makes sense. And then if I overlay the unit vectors at t and t prime on top of each other or superimpose. Oh yeah, that works. Ooh, hey, look at that. That overlaid on itself. Hey, all right. And here, let me, let me clean this up. All right. So those are my unit vectors overlaid on top of each other. Hey, I can say, let me make this a little bit bigger. Yes, like this. So here zoomed in and my unit vectors at t and t prime drawn on top of each other. And what I'll notice is, hey, you know, I know that this angle right here, this angle is delta theta. 
and this angle is also delta theta. And then if I look at the change in the tangential unit vector, you know, I, going uh, based on 90 degrees from its original, then I would have parallel to this original un hat, this blue line would be the change delta ut hat like right there. The way that we would describe ut prime would be by vector algebra ut hat plus delta ut like this. And this would be 90 degrees right there, just like that. And if I'm if I look at the magnitude of delta ut, which we you know the way we would describe that would be delta ut hat magnitude here. And this would be equal to, well, if I include a small angle assumption, so maybe we just need to reflect a little bit on the small angle assumption that you probably got exposed to in calculus. A little segment right here, ds, this was an r, and this was d theta by a small angle assumption where d theta was very, very small, so d theta much less than 1. Then we said that ds is equal to r d theta like this. So we had that small angle assumption here. Here, delta theta is very small. Then we can use the simple relationship to say that, hey, the magnitude of delta ut is just ut hat, the magnitude of that times delta theta. And the magnitude of a unit vector is just one. And so the magnitude of delta ut hat is delta theta. Based on all this, then that tells us delta ut hat can be written as magnitude and direction. So here the magnitude of, of delta ut hat is delta theta. And because it's 90 degrees to the tangential component, it is in the un hat direction. And so I'm going to put a bubble around that. We're able to relate this delta ut into the normal direction. And I'm going to take this and I'm going to substitute that into the definition of the derivative. Let me go get a copy of the definition of the derivative. If I substitute this definition of delta ut, then now my limit as delta t goes to zero is delta theta un hat over delta t like this. Yes. And if delta theta here, check this out, if delta theta is very small as well, then we can say that delta s is equal to rho times delta theta. Hey, that looks even better. And that means if I rearrange this and I say delta theta is delta s over rho, and now I substitute this into the definition of the derivative, then I will get and this would be 1 over rho times ds dt un hat. What is ds dt? Ah, it is the speed here. This would tell us, last but not least. So now if I take this definition of the time derivative of the u tangential unit vector right here, and I substitute into here, boom, then I will get that my acceleration vector a is dv dt ut hat plus v times v over rho un hat, which really just gives me at all my components here. This and this, my at component, and this is my an component. All right, so if you're stuck around and you, you know, you enjoyed, hopefully, you enjoyed this derivation of how we get the acceleration vector and its components from the velocity vector. Hopefully, it added some insight, but now it's all about solving some problems. All right, let me know if you have any questions in the chat below. Take it easy, structure free.